Welcome back to week number four, year number 13 for the Cascade Valley Coyotes. Now, this week, we have a really good opponent up against us. We have the number 23, University of Kentucky. What are they, Wildcats? I don't even know. Now, we are the number one team in the nation. They are 23. We obviously should win this game, but we have not played the best football we could at times. We have some games where we blow our opponents out. We have some games where we aren't lay struggling, as the French say. Okay, Kentucky's roster has some really good players. They've got Cheatham. They have this dude, Gerard Abelin, who's a really good right end. Again, Cheatham is going to be their free safety. Their defense is pretty much where they're making their name. You don't really see an offensive player until you get down here to about... All the way down to Kevin Wright, who's a senior. 88 uh, overall, 98 speed, though, so I'm kind of worried about that a little bit. At quarterback, they have Noski Jones, the top 10 name. 87 overall, 85 speed, only a sophomore. They got behind him, Hamilton Franklin. Two last names, interesting. Uh, or two first names, excuse me, interesting. Uh, but he's ended up being an 83 overall. They have another guy behind him as an 83 overall freshman. I'm assuming they're redshirting him. And then Brock Couch, another guy on their team as a freshman, 77 overall. So they don't really have a guy that jumps off the board at you at quarterback, but they have a lot of dudes that are really competing for that number one spot. And if we check them out from a wide receiver perspective, Kiefer Winslow, he's a soldier. Uh, 87 speed, 84 overall as a senior for them. They've got Kedrick Williams. They have Kadarian Watson. Some guys that, again, have speed, have some potential, but we ain't really worried about them on our secondary. Now, from a Heisman standpoint, Zach Lewis is still the number one guy from Penn State, but I don't, I don't feel like that's going to be happening for long. Okay, our guys are moved up the board. Tyro Brown up to the number two spot, up for number three. They said he had two tackles last week, which is interesting because uh, we did not play with him having whatever it is what it is Taylor Reed obviously dominating 19 for 26 394 yards four total touchdowns it's these two guys to win the Heisman in my opinion I don't really see anybody else beating them so it's either Brown or Reed you take your poison now from a top 25 standpoint you're seeing Cascade Valley sitting there with 39 votes how dare they give somebody else some votes here you're seeing USC 21 points Alabama one vote I don't understand how they have any votes at all we are the dominant team. We are blowing everybody out of the water. No one stands a chance against us. Now, from a recruiting standpoint, we landed three big recruits, and I'm super hyped. We got Rashad Miller, who's going to be a guard for the team. The number two halfback in the nation. The problem with him is, though, your grandmother is faster on a rascal scooter. 85 speed, 86 acceleration. We'll kind of figure it out. I think our team is built well enough to handle a running back like this, but 93 trucking, 89 juke move, 95 injury, 81 carry. 88 ball carry vision. We could not pass up on a guy with this many great attributes. It's just a speed thing. We're kind of hoping gets better over time. After him, we ended up getting Josh Hunt, a 77 overall middle linebacker, 85 speed, 85 acceleration. Good for a linebacker, not great for a running back. But overall, this guy should be a great player for us. Not probably a year one guy, more likely a year two or year three, but with some development could be very good. And then Bryce only has the potential to start from year one or year two. 82 overall at the guard spot, which is you, you've seen our offensive line. We need all the help we can get there. 88 pass block, 81 impact and run block, 91 strength is what I'm really excited about for him. The development for him should be a pretty easy path. Now, as for the rest of our guys, we are <clears throat> in great spots with some and not great with others. Ty Lucky is a guy that I really wanted at halfback and was the reason why we didn't have Rashad Miller on our board anymore. But it's looking like we're not going to get Ty Lucky, even with 700 points maxed out, even with a great bonus of 360. Auburn is still maxing him out with a 410 bonus, which means they have 50 points extra over a week and essentially offer. We have a visit coming in week six. Maybe it'll get us a little bit closer, but overall, this is probably going to be a losing fight for us. Miles Jack Cordyla is a guy that we're in the number one spot for. I feel really good about where we are with him. Jameer Nave, we're climbing up the board. You're seeing with MJ Williams, an 83 overall corner. We are moving up progressively as well. And with a week six visit coming up, we should be good there too. Corey Lowe's are the number one spot, pretty much locked in. Lloyd Griffin, we're moving up. We're at the number one spot. Uh, Schweiderman, a middle linebacker. We may cancel on him, I think, because we got another linebacker. Maybe we don't need him. Um, Ian Scape Jr., a backup tight end. We've got our tight end in the future, pretty much. We're only up plus 15 points for him, so we're actually going to go ahead. Uh, we're going to increase him to about 500 to give us that extra points we need. Greg Pope Jr., 700 points towards him. We're 3,395 behind everyone else. But again, we just started scouting him. I think what we ended up being good. If you don't remember what his scouting stuff is, 95 speed is all I needed to see. Great acceleration for the most part. Uh, more than likely going to be a wide receiver with 85 catch and traffic, 96 route running. This is a guy that should be great. All right, Cascade Valley rocking the ghost uniform. One of the fan favorite setups is here playing at Kentucky today. Should be a pretty tough game. Butler's going to move in motion here. Taylor Reese staying in shoddy, ready to see what he's got here. Throws a dicey ball to Jay Bohm. He throws hospital balls to that man all game long. But as long as he's staying healthy, we don't care. Tyro Brown in the backfield, ready to get things going here against Kentucky. He's going to try to bounce one of the years. You know, this man's got some speed. He hasn't been showing it as much in the recent years, but that is the kind of run we want to see from the young fella. Last season was kind of crazy for Tyro Brown. He just didn't really get the opportunities that he really wanted to. And kind of till the end of the season, 
season. And honestly, to me, it felt like he has a new quarterback or doesn't run the football as much, and he had to kind of refigure out his game. And while we definitely had some pain points early on, I think it, you saw at the end of the season, Tyrell Brown looked more of like the Tyrell Brown of old, and that is exactly what we want to see. Taylor Reed looking a little bit gassed in the backfield here, goes to the play action. He's got guys blitzing. He's trying to go somewhere. Had a guy maybe across the field, but Kentucky sent the house on that one. Taylor Reed makes a quick adjustment here. Third and very long. Pretty much getting your driver's license on this one. And it's a dot to Michael Isaacs, who immediately gets killed and drops the rock. If there's one thing you know about Coach Mervyn McMurvin is that the punters do not get a lot of work out there for him. This is a man that is willing to throw the rock as much as humanly possible to try and get some diversity. Even on fourth and 16, this man is willing to do it. He's going to throw one, and it's a great defensive play by Marlon Edwards in Kentucky. Doesn't allow a touchdown and gets the ball in pretty good field position. Now, earlier in the game, I felt like from a similar space, they ended up lining up and not kicking the field goal. Here, though, on fourth and 12, deep. They're going to try to see if their kicker has enough leg. This one is up. This one is closing in, and they say it is not going to be good, which is great news for Cascade Valley offense, which is struggling. Now, we beat Florida last week, but they are on pace to upset number 20 Tennessee, which would help our strength of schedule. The offense back in the field, hoping that third time is the charm as they are just struggling to get the ball anywhere near the red zone. First quarter winds down, Cascade Valley in this offense, looking for something that was the most risky pass we've seen all day from a struggling Taylor Reed. That the squad needs some good news right here. Reed scrambling. Reed is going to try to turn up one time. Taylor Reed, not exactly the fastest guy in America, but he is going to get an 18 yard rush. Reed under center. Sees his guys a beautiful ball. Didn't want the linebacker to have a chance at it. And McBride holds it in for 28. Couple of adjustments here. Little check down Charlie. Tyro Brown makes a couple guys miss and gets nearly the first down. Second and short. Tyro Brown back in the game. Runs over a man like he owed him his lunch money five weeks in a row. He meant business. Playing for potential option here. Our guys locking in. Pressure gets to Nosky Jones, and it's Heinrich bringing him down. Heinrich having an absolute heater of a game right now. He's put pressure on the quarterback a lot. He hit Kevin Wright so hard that his mama fell down. When this has been a great game for the first time starter here in Hart and Heinrich. Jay Bohm getting an opportunity again. He's got new drip. Everyone complained for weeks about that man's drip, and he's still playing very good, but just looks a little bit better now. He makes an adjustment here. Sees his tight end. He's going to find McBride, who is out here leaking out for a 26 yard game. Plenty of time left here in the first half. Try to extend our lead to double digits. And Tyro Brown's making some moves. He's got a guy to try to beat here. Hits it with a shimmy. Lost him almost all the way, but it's a 26 yard run, and he is hype. Another run here for Tyro Brown. He's finding some room, and he gets six yards. Good run again. Second and four. This offense looking much better this time. Taylor Reed doesn't really like anything here. He's scrambling around, trying to get close to the first. He gets hit out of bounds, and ref, where is the flag? Third down, one yard to go. Jay Bohm get by the defense, and he's in the end zone for a 14-yard touchdown. Third down, one yard to go. We try to get our guys there, and it's Donnell Gamblin again, the concussion maker. So Kentucky's going to line up here, trying to get their first points of the entire ball game. With about two and a half minutes left, the kick is up. They missed one earlier. This one has enough juice, and it's going to cut the lead to an 11-point game. So Kentucky comes out. They've got a five-wide wide receiver set. They're going to try their best to get this ball advanced and to get the ball in the end zone. Jones has been feeling a little bit too comfortable in the pocket. We're trying to get some pressure on him, but again, they're mixing up the run and the pass incredibly well, and Kevin Wright is having a ball game. Jones, again, feeling too comfortable. We're trying to get some pressure he's feeling a little antsy here he's gonna run and Donnell Gambling gets thrown to the ground like a small child on the playground as Nosky Jones gets his best run of the game and bringing the heavy blitz here this man is finding room to run Desmond Simmons gets pushed in the back no penalty from the ref and back-to-back -back major runs by Jones gets Kentucky in the driver's seat doing our best to bring in a blitz we got a good stop there as Reggie Kraft this is maybe first or second tackle of the game doing our best to make sure we contain Jones don't let him get anything but we gotta forget about Kevin Kraft as this dude is gonna Kevin Wright as he goes in the end zone with 46 seconds left, Kentucky is going to cut this game to a four-point ball game going into halftime. We better do something big. So Kentucky comes out here in the second half, eager to see what they can do. They are only down four points. This is a game they didn't really expect to be fully in, but they have found a way to stay right there with us. Trying to get in there again. This run game has been so good for Kentucky, and they make it third down and inches to go. The best news for us right now is that Kentucky is one for five on third down conversions. We're trying. Donald Gamble completely whiffed. Lanier is going to have to be the guy that brings it down. He can't. And Nosky Jones does the unthinkable. Looking like Lamar out there with that escapability. Nosky Jones continues to keep Kentucky alive. It's the combination of his running and Kevin Rice running. And then they, now they go with the wide receiver trying to run. Finally, Desmond Simmons brings him down. Second down and 11. Jones throws an absolute dot. Desmond Simmons getting burned in coverage. It's not something we're used to seeing. And then he whips on the tackle. Kadarian Watson in Kentucky. 
have taken the lead. Down for the first time in today's game, we've got to do better. We came out here overlooking this Kentucky team, looking at rankings, and not actually thinking about how good this team could be against our matchups. Second to seven, going right back here to Brown. Brown trying to fight for his brand. He gets it to 30 inches. With a three-man front, Coach McBurman's going to line right back up to throw this one because he knows that Kentucky cannot stop this offensive line in Tyro Brown. Sometimes we get a little pass happy. We throw a little bit too much with Taylor Reed and forget that our bread and butter is running that football. We have to set up the run so that the pass can be successful as well. You hit him with the play action. The pressure is real. He does find his guy McBride, but it doesn't really go for more than a yard here. If there's something this team has overlooked, it has definitely been the pressure created by the defensive ends for Kentucky. They have been everywhere and they merely nearly get a pick there. We've been four down on, on fourth down before and it did not work our way. We've got plenty to try to make up here on fourth down and six yards to go. A massive play for Cascade Valley. A pass to McBride, though, is going to be more than enough as McBride gets it and moves after nine. Brown back out here to the run, but a quick attack by the DB stops him after one. Second down, nine yards to go. Right across the middle is where Jay Bone makes his living. Where Derek Johnson get in here for a carry. He's had a couple today. We're looking to see if he can get successful. And he gets a big block from his offensive line, and he's down for 16 yards. Taylor Reed sees something. Trying to take advantage of it. Across the middle, and it's Carnell Killens in the end zone 13 yards later. Cascade Valley, they got the lead. Things getting wild here. Cascade Valley just trying to survive on the road, doing what they can, but Kentucky is putting up a fight as they stiff arm some of our best defensive players out of the play. Playing for the pass here. Noski Jones out here running. Our guys are whiffing an unbelievable amount. Mikel Lanier brings him down, but Jones is increasing that running total considerably. I think one of the big differences for us right now is that Donald Gamblin was balling out in the first half, and we haven't really called his name much in a positive way this half. And Kentucky is really feeling the momentum. Our guys would do a better job of getting pressure on this quarterback. They're going with the halfback screen here. We need guys to get over there. We got absolutely full. We got guys falling down. We got one last line of defense, and Reggie Kraft. He hit him with the Heisman pose. Cascade Valley in hostile territory. Playing on the road is never easy, especially when you get down to Kentucky. Banjo's playing. People dressed all kinds of crazy in overalls, and we are fighting for our lives with a minute 13 left in the third. It's also a level of criticism right now that Coach Merv McMurvin had an opportunity for a field goal, didn't go for it, and because of that, this game could have been tied, but instead we're down three. Back to the run game. Tyrell Brown fighting. Not really much blocking here, but he still gets a couple of yards. Derek Johnson comes in this time. Looking for some great blocking. He had a lane, but just doesn't quite have the wiggle to get in there. Coach McGurver, though, lines up to go for here. He believes in his guys. It's the third quarter's ending where Derek Johnson gets the blocks he needs finally, and that is going to take us into the fourth quarter, down three points. First play of the fourth quarter. Killens looking for something. Doesn't like anything he really sees there. Fumbles out of bounds. This is a risky effort by him right now. Reed again making adjustments here as Coach McMurvin relying on him pretty heavily. A ball across the middle with the linebacker's head turn is going to go just where we need it with Carnell Killens catching it. Sucky's back's against the wall, but right now Cascade Valley is trying their best to get in the end zone here as Brown jukes into a defender for after two. Even though he's had some lower runs the last couple of plays, Tyrell Brown's still having a great game. Nearly 100 yards in the afternoon. We're trying to make sure he gets the rock a little bit more here. A great juke is going to help us get the first down. They said moving to the SEC was going to give us tougher games. And honestly, we didn't think that was going to be the case for the first while because we hadn't had any. But this one is definitely a tough one. Carnell Killens, Jason Bakes a little too much, and he gets two. Reed and Brown in the backfield here is going to be a handoff to Tyrell Brown. Tyrell Brown finds a gap, and six yards later, he's going to get this lead back. But can we hold on to it? Things getting a little crazy here. Kentucky has the rock. We have not forced a single turnover against Kentucky right now, which... We honestly don't believe that was nearly blocked by the defensive end, Jesse Rivers, but he goes just past his hand. Kosky Jones halfway here, the play action fake, throws one to a wide open Watson. The coverage we've had today has been pretty terrible. Keeping it moving, they're going with a little bit of a QB read option. Dino Gamblin is having none of it, finally. We haven't called his name positively in a while. All respect to Gamblin, though, he has been bowling out. Nine tackles, three for loss, two sacks overall. It's been a great performance by him and even a better one by Noski Jones as we bring him down. They say he got the first. That should have been a sack, but our defensive ends are playing terrible right now. This is not the effort we were expected from our defense at the moment. They've got to do something a little bit more positive than this right now. That ball could have been picked by Desmond Simmons for his 18th of his career, but he goes a little too deep and it doesn't go to him. Tucky back here to the run. Our guy's trying to get a stop, but it's a dude that has been killing us all game. They have 190 combined rush yards. This is an embarrassment for Cascade Valley. Five minutes left in the game, and Kentucky's feeling great. They've been moving the ball at will. Our guys are right there, and Sam Allen could have had the pick that could have sealed this game. Our guys trying to get a stop here. Mikel Lanier is able to get in the backfield. Third and 12 coming up. Needing a major stop here. We're trying our best. Noski Jones throws one off his back foot. Are you kidding me? Our guys aren't there. Bro, you can't make it up. 
That might have been the most unbelievable throw we have ever seen, and Kentucky's got to be feeling good about what they're doing right now. Our guys need a little positivity in some way, shape, or form. They're going to find out for McBride as he gets almost a first, third in inches. Third down inches to go. This is obviously four down territory for this squad. Tyro Brown is going to get the first. We're going to keep the chains moving. We don't want to give them any time, and we want to score a touchdown. Back to the run game. Kentucky's honestly struggled with that a little bit today. We're going to see five yards again from Tyro Brown. Second and five, back to the play action. J Bone wide open in space is what you want to see, and it's enough for the first, six yards later. Coach McBurman is definitely dinking and dunking a lot here. Don't want to risk anything that just doesn't need to be risked right now. Well, Derek Johnson with a good run to get us about six. Cascade Valley driving right now another run here from Tyrell Brown they say he's got the first which is all we want to see two minutes and some change left or Derek Johnson gets the carry not the guy we wanted in the game Tyrell Brown though a little gas and had to come out for a play second and nine read under center sees his guy Jeremiah Butler Jeremiah Butler with some moves and he's going to stay in balance which is the most important thing as we try to milk some of this clock and hopefully get a score Derek Johnson in the game so we're going to switch things up a little bit go back to more of a power type run and Johnson's going to get us down after a four yarder in situations like this, we would typically be passing the football a little bit here, but it's just a little scary. We have two running backs. We're going to use both of them. But now we're in a dicey third down and six yards to go. We are willing to go to overtime. If that's what it takes, we trust our team. This is a big play. Third down to six. We have a field goal unit. They bail out completely. Roderick Johnson is going to waste a little bit of time and get in the end zone. We like our chances. We will take this. They have to go down and score a touchdown now because the extra point is going to be good. To make sure the extra point is good, we are kicking it ourselves. The computer nearly blocks it, but we have a four-point lead with 26 seconds. The Coach McMurvin is sweating in that suit. Kentucky's got to feel good. Not great. They've got some time. They can do something, but Nolski Jones has been relying too much on the run, and he's going to go down short of the marker. Kentucky's going to use their first time out with 10 seconds left. Second out of four yards to go. Again, just trying to make sure they can't really do anything. They go with the check down. Charlie played with Asante, and that's going to get it third and one with six seconds left. They are in dire straits. We have been in situations like this before where Hail Mary has worked against us. We have lost to Purdue years ago on a Hail Mary with no time left. They're throwing one deep. We have 7,000 people there to cover it. It's going to go incomplete, and CVU is going to survive the thriller in Kentucky. Banjos, overalls, and country music was prevalent, but you know it was not prevalent. A W for Kentucky as Cascade Valley escapes. That is an ESPN classic for sure. Tyrell Brown, 20 carries, a buck 16, two touchdowns, 31 yards receiving. Looked like the Heisman, if you ask me. Woo! Recapping the stats for the game again. Taylor Reed did not play bad. Three passing touchdowns, one interception, got sacked a bunch. I really blame this on how good Kentucky's defensive ends were putting pressure. Our left tackle and right tackle were just not ready today. On the ground, though, Tyrell Brown. 20 for 116, two tutties. You saw the stats already. Roderick Johnson at 56. He was great in relief. Uh, on the receiving side, McBride, 5 for 76. Jay Bone, 5 for 60 in a tutty. Carnell Killens is 76 in a tutty. And we also see Roderick Johnson in the game-winning touchdown. They sold out. They blitz heavy. We had Roderick Johnson in. They kind of assumed that it would be a run based off Johnson being in the game. But he can catch a little bit. And he showed it right there. Defensively, Donald Gamblin was their guy. 10 tackles, 3 for loss, 2 sacks. His first half was significantly better than how he played in the second half. But still, he made a couple of key plays here and there that really put us in position to somehow eke out a victory here. Lanier was great with 9 tackles. But what I'm mostly just frustrated about, we didn't get a single interception on them. Pressure-wise, the quarterback was great. Again, gambling with two. Heinrich with one. We hit the quarterback a couple of times. But our guys on the end just did not pay enough attention to Nosky Jones. And when they didn't, he ran for 70-plus yards on us because of that. Not every game is going to be pretty. We have new opponents in the SEC that are making our life significantly more difficult. But as long as we get a W, that's all that matters. Because we're trying to get our best. The 4P. Be safe, be smart, tell somebody you love them. Catch you guys in the next one.